two years after the Transcontinental Railroad had been finished, the Texas and Pacific Railway Company, formerly the California and Texas Railway Company, would be federally chartered on March 3, 1871. The original goal was to connect the cities of Marshall, Texas to San Diego, California. Originally, the DNP was supposed to be a 3 foot 6 inch gauge railroad, but this would be swiftly overturned by the state legislative, making it the standard of 4 foot and 8 and a half inches. And eventually, on May 2nd of 1872, the TNP had connected the cities of Marshall and Texarkana. And only a year later, the TNP would connect the cities of Longview and Dallas, Texas. And as one would expect, the TNP's success had caught the eye of the robber baron. That robber baron being one Jay Gold. Jay Gold, at the time, was the current president of the Missouri Pacific Railroad. Jay would lease money to the TNP. Once the lease ended in 1885, it would spark a relationship with the Missouri Pacific that would make them very close. And funnily enough, the TNP's purpose of connecting Marshall to San Diego never came to be. Like many railroads at the time, the TNP had one goal to lay as much track as humanly possible. By 1881, the TNP had over 1,034 miles of consecutive track. However, a small problem would occur. That problem being the SP. Originally, the SP had agreed to meet the TP at Yuma, Arizona. But due to the slow pace of the TNP, at the SP just kept building and building and building all the way on the TMP's right of way, all the way through El Paso. That drama would be settled by the Gold and Hunting Agreement of November 26, 1881. The agreement allowed for the two of them to meet at Sierra Blanca, Texas. After that, the TMP wouldn't build a lot of trackage, they would mainly buy small short lines. Unfortunately for the TNP, by 1888, it had gone completely bankrupt. To help with the 3.5 million acres of land and other assets, the Texas and Pacific Land Corporation was established, which is still in operation to this day. The 1900s saw the TNP trying to rapidly grow due to rising competition from other railroads and the automobile. Not a whole lot happened in the early 1900s, but in 1915 there was a bit of a legal dispute. To put it simply, the TNP had been buying a lot of railroads and had accumulated over $3 million in unpaid loans. And by 1916, a verdict had been reached. John L. Lancaster and Pearl White would be set to be the receivers. And shortly after that, World War I rolled around the corner the TNP became a heavy carrier of troops and supplies, and eventually the war was over. During the 1920s, the TNP saw a large boost in passenger transportation, as many famous trains like the Sunshine Special, the Louisiana Eagle, and the Texas Eagle served heartily through the TNP's mainline. Also during the 20s, the TNP helped build the Texas oil industry as it began to boom in the early 1900s. The TNP was also very big into updating its system. Steel rails and automatic block signaling were added in the 1920s. Even with its success, the Great Depression would change it all. Only a few years before the Great Depression, everything was going great for the TP. They recently had their brand new Texas types brought in, and the Missouri Pacific owned majority of their share in 1928. But this would not stop the power and the destruction of the Great Depression. Ridership and freight traffic dramatically decreased during the 1930s. Just like the other railroads, the TP struggled to stay afloat for most of the year. Everything seemed like it would just end in doom and gloom. 
But then in 1939, World War II broke out, causing a boom in the Texas and Pacific's freight and passenger service for the Army. After the war, the DMB began to switch from steam to diesel. And sadly, on May 26th of 1953, the last steam locomotive, number 650, was scrapped. During the 50s, the TMP would remarkably do well, and by the 60s, it was starting a decline that they would not recover from. In 1967, the last TNP passenger train would leave the Fort Worth station. Soon after that, the Fort Worth station would close down permanently. And the 70s were much harder. The TMP couldn't survive, so on October 15, 1976, the TNP and the Missouri Pacific would merge. Even though the TMP is long gone, three of her locomotives have survived, a handful of buildings are still around to tell their tales, and miles of track still shine underneath the Texas sun. The three surviving locomotives are the 610, the 316, and the 400. The 610 is an I-1A 2104 Texas type built in 1927. The 316 is a D9 460 10 wheeler built in 1901 and the 400 is an E4A1 282 Mikado built for the Fort Worth and Denver Railway. It was built in 1915 and then promptly sold in 1958 to the Texas and Pacific Railroad. The 610 and the 316 have seen operational condition after they were retired originally. The 610 was on the American Freedom Train and then on the Southern, and then the 316 ran at the Texas State Railroad for a few years. And surviving with these locomotives are the Grand Stations still along the old T&P right-of-way, standing as memories to a long-forgotten time.